Look, it's like no, so it's okay. all you. No pressure. <laughs> Had to feel good to all see right. some, of, some of Cade's shots go down. He said that he, he needed it as a confidence boost and that when the second one went down, kind of started feeling pretty normal. Yeah, I was, you know, I was happy that he was able to make some shots. That's one of many things that he can do out there on the floor that's a benefit to us. Um, I thought he was playing confident. It's not about making shots. I, I've said a number of times in regards to Cade, he's a basketball player. Um, yes, he can shoot the basketball, but he can defend, he can rebound. He's a good passer. He understands how to play on both ends of the floor, and he's somebody that um, we need playing at a high level. And I was, I was happy that uh, tonight he played with confidence, and I was really, really proud of him. You were 64 points for any team in one half is pretty dang good. That's what you guys had in the second half. What, what did you think allowed you guys to get to playing to sort of that pace that you wanted against a team that likes to, you know, sort of take their time? Yeah, you know, it, you know, for this team to play at that pace, it, like it, it is all tied to defense. I mean, it was the same way in the second half against Kansas. I mean, we we got stops, and when you get stops and you finish it with the rebound, we're pretty good in transition. I mean, just our pitch aheads. Uh, you know, I said at the beginning of the year, in order for us to be good in transition, one, you got to be in the best shape of your life, and two, there needs to be a full commitment. And there, there's been a full commitment uh, with these guys in regards to, to spreading to offense. And just the unselfishness of, like, pitching the ball ahead, seeing the open guy, and having multiple guys when you pitch the ball ahead that actually can attack the basket and do something with it, I just think it's a huge benefit for us. Hubert, how do you describe what you saw from Drake tonight? I mean, he led you guys in rebounding, had some pretty incredible blocks as well. Yeah, you know, um, he had 11 rebounds, which is huge. And, you know, that's just athleticism and length. Like you can use them in a number of different spots on both ends of the floor. And he does stuff that we didn't teach him or drill or wasn't in any station. Um, the block, that's the second time he's done a block where he's <coughs> caught it with both hands. Last time I can remember that was uh, MJ doing that when we played together with the Wizards. We were playing the Chicago Bulls and they were going in for a layup on me. They would have easily scored because there was no way I was going to do anything. And Michael at 40 came away from nowhere and grabbed it with two hands. And, you know, uh, he's just really elite. And uh, he's just starting to scratch the surface of what he can do out there on the floor. and. You, know, you combine that with the type of character kid he is. It's just, as I said before, he's always asking, what can I do more? What can I do better? Coming from a McDonald's All-American, that's, that's rare. That's pretty cool. You were at, um, RJ was one of six tonight from three. And I believe he's now five of 25 for yeah. the season. Mm -hmm. Is it just a matter of shots no, not going down, or is there something else going on? No, I, I think, you know, uh, one of the things I tell the guys all the time is there, there are going to be times where your you know shot goes in and there's times that they don't. I, you know, their you know percentages even out. And RJ is a great basketball player, but he can also really shoot. And you know those percentages are going to even out. There's going to be times where he's going to close his eyes and throw the ball up, and it's going to be able to go in. You know, one of the things that and I did talk to RJ earlier this week. And I told him I felt like I could um, relate to him in regards to, I remember my senior year, um, my, the guys that I rolled with or my better friends on the team were King Rice, Rick Fox, Pete Chilcutt, and my roommate was Justin Corral. He was the head manager. They were one year older than me, and they left. And I remember being the only senior and even though I was playing with great players like Derek Phelps and Brian Reese and Eric Montross, it my senior year it took me a little while. It was just, the the rhythm was just a, a little off. I don't, you know, just where were my boys, you know? And I would get the ball, but I would get it at a different spot, and it was just a little different rhythm. And it really took me a little bit of time my senior year to find that rhythm. And once I did, it was ready to go. And I, I feel the same way. With RJ, when I told him that story, I could just see his face lighting up. And he goes, yeah, that's kind of how I feel, you know? And I was like, yeah. Um, I said, everything is fine. I said, just dive yourself into being a great defensive player, uh, um, uh, distributing the basketball. And I said, you're taking great shots, and they're going to go in. So I'm, 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 I'm ready for 
um, him to make all of his shots. <laughs> <laughs> Hubert, on that note, when you played, did you have, when you went through slumps yeah. in shooting, did yeah. you have like a go-to slump busting method that you can yeah. impart on some of these guys when they're going through that? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that I did was always, first of all, I, I wanted to check my, you know, technique. You know, was there <coughs> anything wrong with mechanically that I was doing wrong? The second thing that I did was shot selection. I don't care how good a shooter you are, if you're shooting bad shots, they're, they're you know, they're not, they're not going to go in. And I would, I would look at those two things. And then um, once I could check those two boxes, then I would just continue to get back in the gym. But I would, I would just uh, lose myself in, in other stuff. I would say, look, I, I, I'm going to get extra rebounds. I'm going to get extra assists. I'm going to get loose balls. I'm going to be um, even better on the defensive end and not think about oh my gosh, here comes my shot, I've got to make it, and just take my mind off of that. And those are the things that I did when my shot wasn't falling the way that I wanted to, and I just was confident <laughs> enough I, if I you know, took good shots, eventually it would go in and you know, it worked out. You had a really good year that season. I you did. Really, did you talk to them about the kind of year you ended up having? And how, I did. And how long did it take you to the point where you felt like you were back in the right kind of group? Yeah, uh, probably on the road. We're playing Seton Hall in Madison Square Garden. I mean, in um, uh, the Meadowlands. It was the ACC Big East Challenge with the kids. Uh, was it Terry DeHair and uh, uh, PJ Carlissimo and uh, uh, Luther Wright? Um, and um, that was a game that uh, I got into a rhythm. And uh, from there, I felt really good. And I told I told RJ that. And I said, just, I said it's not going to take long. I said, you just continue to be the player that you have been over the last four years and everything will take care of itself. I thought he was the key to the game in the second half. I thought his leadership in the locker room, his um, uh, just um, his energy, his enthusiasm, uh, the way that he was uh, leading in the locker room at halftime, I thought was a number one key in getting everybody really excited to play a better second half. It was a career high for Jay Wash, um, but maybe more importantly, the fire from him beating himself up a couple times there. Uh, I mean, that's other than not injuring himself, that has to be something I would think you like to see out of him, that, that, that intensity coming out. Um, that's what I want to see from everybody. Um, I'm an emotional person, and so I always tell them that, and I was an emotional player, uh, because I was doing something that I love at a place that I love with people that I love. And I said, if you can check those three boxes, I don't know how you not show emotion out there on the floor. I just remember playing. I would have tears in my eyes. I would just be so excited and joyful having an opportunity to play here, play on this floor, play for Coach Smith, play for this university, and play a game that I love in front of 22,000 fans. I don't know how you not beat yourself up with your hands. You know, it's just... And so I love seeing that type of emotion from them. I, I encourage that every day um, to do that. And to do that not only for yourself, but to do that and to be able to celebrate other people's success. That's exactly what I want. Yeah, a couple more. Just talking about um, that emotion, Jalen talked about coming, going from being a passive player to a more aggressive one this season. Can you speak to the shifts you've seen from him from last season to this season? Yeah, he's a lot, a lot more confident. Um, his personality is coming out. And, you know, I, I specifically told the team this today. You know, whatever your personality is off the court, that's awesome. That's the way that Jesus made you, and we celebrate that every day. But if you're a quiet person off the court, you cannot be a quiet person on the court. If you're a laid-back, casual guy off the court, you cannot be a laid back casual guy on the court. Like you, you're gonna have your personality is gonna have to change. And um, Jay Wash is a really sweet, quiet giant, and I love that about him. But on the court, I want, I, I want the one that's hit him himself in the head. <laughs> I want that all the time. Not just for him, but for his teammates. What he does, if he gets a rebound, do that. You know, or he dives on the floor. <coughs> um, I, uh, again, like. It is a requirement of our guys. If you play for me, you you got to have emotion, a passion to play. Because I just that's the way that I coach, and that's the way I want those guys to play. What's the biggest difference with Elliott driving to the rim now as opposed to <coughs> last year? Oh, um, 
Well, he, I mean, he can get there pretty much any time he wants to, you know, and it's, uh, I know he got a charge. Didn't he get a charge call? At the yes. Beginning? Yeah, he got one, but, you know, his ability to get into the lane, it's, it's very rare for someone to get in there and be able on the fly to decide whether to shoot or pass. A lot of times people predetermine, they go in there, I'm only thinking shot, or, man, I'm looking past. Like, he can, he can make a decision in a split second, and... In transition, ball screen action, he just has the ability to do that. But I think the biggest thing is his just growth as a leader. I mean, just in the locker room, we were talking, and, like, he talks now. Freshman year, he didn't say anything. This year, he's laughing, he's talking, he's communicating, he's encouraging, and, you know, it's gotten off to a really good start. That's a good follow-up to that. Yeah, how about playing through contact? Like he's handling stuff at the rim, getting the ball off a bit more. Yeah, he is. Uh, he is. You know, I mean, he's, he's, he's a strong kid. He can take contact and be able to finish. And um, um, But, you know, that goes back to his commitment in the summer. It hasn't just been on the shot. It's been in the weight room. It's been on his conditioning. It's been in, on his nutrition. He's just he's done all of that. But you're right. When he gets into the lane, his ability to create contact and still be able to make plays, um, <coughs> doing that at an elite level.